Alrighty, greetings everyone, and welcome to my first DaVinci Resolve uh, color grading tutorial. And today we are going to have a look at Solo, and more specifically, uh, what Solo actually could have been. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with this film, it was the, I believe it was the 10th installment in the mainline uh, theatrically released Star Wars movies. And Solo is unique because at the time the film underwent some pretty massive uh, disputes behind the scene. Uh, two of the directors, uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, were forced out. Ron Howard was brought in at the last moment. And what should have been a fairly, eh, maybe not cheap movie to make, uh, actually cost a lot more than it actually should have been. And uh, there are quite a few rumors that behind the scenes that the film was rushed. And in my opinion, if these rumors are true, I think that could be a substantial reason as to why the movie has such poor color grading because if you look at this image right here well there's not a lot going on it it's very flat there's not a lot happening within it uh, the, the contrast is very low the, the colors haven't been brought out I mean there's just this gray fog that extends all over the place and while many people do think this could have been something that was a aesthetic choice personally I'm betting that they filmed with some very high dynamic range cameras, you know, they filmed with your Red or your Arri Alexa or, you know, something along these lines. And at the end of the day, they probably didn't have a lot of time to go in and actually color grading or, you know, to actually go in and color grade a lot of their shots. So what I've done is that I've chopped up this scene and I've made my own adjustments to Solo. So I'm just going to... Put this crop on and just show you guys some of the work that I've done here. So a lot of what I actually tried to do with this is that I wanted to go in and I wanted to lend more contrast and I wanted to bring more red to the flesh tones, sort of get rid of that that zombie look. And I also wanted to give just a little bit more color uh, to the overall atmosphere to see what's actually going on here. As you can see, the sand actually you know, it looks a little bit more yellow. The ocean looks more fleshed out. And if you want to see the difference between our, our, our characters here in a second at, at these at, at, at the skin, at the flesh tones, I think there's a world of difference that's been brought in. All right, here's a good example. Now let's go and take a closer look here. All right, so we have our Han Solo character, right? And as you can see, there's a little bit more red to his face. He, he looks ostensibly more human. I brought in a lot of uh, the, the darker colors. He has some more shadow to him. Uh, this is uh, a byproduct of the gain and the lift that I adjusted just by sort of finding some of the focal points and finding a match between the two of them. And... As we can see, there's quite a bit of difference here, just adjusting some of the saturation levels. Now, the way I went about uh, these different these different corrections that I made, I wanted to use a a four node system. I wanted to make my corrections step by step. This is a good example of what I've done here uh, with the scene where Kira is uh, flying away on her spaceship, making her escape at the end of the film. It's a bit of a spoiler for you guys. I'm sorry if you haven't seen this movie. Uh, so at any rate, uh, the first correction I did, this node right here, this is just the baseline, okay? If I were to deactivate all of these, jeez. Uh, I were to deactivate all these nodes, you wouldn't really see a whole world of difference between the end product. Uh, but like I said, node 2 is where I made my first corrections here with uh, the gain and the lift. In fact, if you want me to reset that, I can show you exactly what I did here. Now, as far as the lift went, I was looking for the darkest point that's in this scene. So I decided to settle right on her hair right here. Now, this is a little bit too dark, which is why we need to adjust some of these uh, lighting levels over here, just with this one simple tool. This looks a little bit better. We can make some light adjustments from here on out. 
Obviously, this is no better than where we came from, but the shadows are a little bit more balanced out. We have some more light cascading on her face. I believe that this look is just a little bit more appealing compared to what we had over here. It's more defined, so to speak. Uh, node 2, or excuse me, Node 3 was just a very simple alteration I made to saturation. Now, one thing you want to be careful of when you're playing with this one tool is that it's very possible to make a shot that, that looks like barf. I mean, this just looks... Uh, this just looks obnoxious, in my opinion. So, never, never go to 100. That's a big mistake. I like to just key this in at 60, have something that's a little bit noticeable, but that won't really distract you from the overall tone of the scene. Hang on, let me just play with this a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And last but not least, as far as Node 4 is concerned, I decided to have a look at the midtones right here. Now, the midtones is sort of the halfway point uh, between your lights and your shadows. And this is typically where you're probably going to have the more subtle effect. And that's really what color graying is all about. It's about subtlety, right? You don't want to have a shot that looks absolutely obnoxious and that will be really distracting to people. So I just wanted to lift up the midtones a little bit, just add some more red to the scene, add a little bit more yellow, stuff that will already complement what's in this frame. I applied the same corrections to this shot right here, and I think they look quite noticeable. Yeah, we're just going to lift up those midtones. And that's pretty much how I went about editing this. Now, uh, first of all, getting to this point where I had all of these little scenes carved up, this was a little bit difficult because I had to go in, I had to identify, okay, where do I need to cut? Where do I need to let it go on? And then from that point, I just had to go through all these individual scenes. I'd make, you know, the adjustments. Some of these were, you know, a little bit easier just because I could work with the screen grab function, right? Where I can basically just create my own LUT just by uh, using the, the corrections from, I don't know, say, say this scene right here. I mean, this was really easy to transfer from this part right here, all I had to do was just grab this screen, grab this still, and just apply this onto this shot right here. That was that was a pretty easy process. Yeah, but otherwise, I mean, I don't know. Solo was in a bad movie. I just think that you can tell that it was truly rushed, and I, I think there could have been something really special here. Because this is just ugly. I mean, ugh. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in to this tutorial. I think at some point down the line, I might try and look at some other projects. I might look at uh, some other films, uh, maybe Man of Steel. Uh, the last couple of Saw movies that came out had some had some pretty atrocious grading and actually some stuff that's useful to know if you're ever working with uh, fake blood on set. So, yeah, just... Uh, Please let me know what you would like to see, and don't be afraid to leave a shout-out in the comments section. Alrighty, guys. Take care.